we're just setting the sumo legs as deep as they'll go so that the discs don't do as much because we're going to disc it level before it and we don't want to work it too fine in case it goes all boggy and rains and then we're going to change the depth of the roller as well so the discs are barely doing anything but the legs and the roller are doing the, the packing down for working the spud ground that's been worked I'm back under the boiler because this motor that croaked it last week when we put a second hand one that's now decided to die so I don't quite know why so anyway I'm going to take it apart and see if we can find another one to go on it we're here now with the sumo we come along with the disc the top is basically just sort of like slop could do with another couple of dry days but then when you look at some of the puddles are full of water they're not going to dry in a few days anyway Sam we've put the tines deep on the sumo now and the disc not really doing anything in particular and he seems to be able to pull it unbelievably so we might just try and do what we can with the sumo get rid of some of this compaction where these trailers are driven it's all right with the harvester drove because it's that's okay on tracks but the trailers have really cut in and they're the bits that are puddled and it's not getting the water away so if we can get over with that if it's level enough we can drill straight into it if it's not we'll have to disc it in a couple of days when it's dried a bit more get it a bit more level but I don't want to get the seedbed too fine in case we get any heavy rain after we've drilled at this time of year because the days aren't as long but it's 19 degrees today and it's supposed to be 20 tomorrow so it should dry pretty well but there's less breeze today so I might get some spraying done but if he can get through here now and pull all these wheelings out hopefully it'll start to dry just slipping a little bit the tractor legs are loosening it and it's it should drain away now so if you get any more rain it'll drain through it rather than sit on the top where the trailers have compacted it it's too wet so we're giving up i'm gonna have to wait for it to dry a bit more i'll we'll try and find a drier field dad's picked up a new motor so we're just gonna go and put it on now just gonna wire it in get the phases the right way so it spins in the right direction there we go, working and it's as quiet as a mouse as well, which is good. This bucket's a bit slack because these are JCB hooks and the Merlot ones are a bit smaller. So we're just making a shim to go in there and it'll tighten it up on the pin. We're just hammering it around the bar to get it, get it the right size. Sam's made two shoes now. So we'll put it on the Merlot and try it. It's still a little bit of slack around this, this pin here. So we'll probably make another two shoes and then slide them all in and then weld it up. I just put some water in the sprayer ready for spraying some Roundup. And there's just loaded some fencing and telegraph poles which are going to be strainer posts to take up to the rain hill because we're going to fence off a field there because the dog field up here gets quite muddy in the winter whereas up there it's free of draining soil. So we're hoping if we can we can use two in the winter so they don't get as muddy. So they get that on there and slide it in, put them all on, I forgot one. So. Cut these down and just strain the post you see. Got two in there now. Two in there. I'm just gonna weld them up now. Take the slack out. That's better now, it's a lot tighter now on the bar on the front of the Merlot. And then obviously it's brought it closer to this as well because it's come down sort of that much, which will make it tighter on there so the pin goes in further. These are JCB buckets originally, but we've adapted them to fit the Merlot and it's got the bucket brush on. So this is what Tom was, Tom Pemberton was asking me about the other day, how they work. We've got a motor on the end, bristles spin, flick it into the bucket and we have it on an old bucket so that we don't have to keep taking it on and off the bucket because otherwise you have to take two pins out here which have been lost and it's quite awkward to line up again so we just drop it off the front and undo the pipes you do a better job when you go backwards because as you go backwards the brush then brushes after you've done if you go forwards with them anything that misses ends up underneath the bucket and it leaves a bit of a mark so you're better off going backwards with them Andy's been fixing this Ranger because the tyre delaminated so the tyre came off the, off it's like the tread came off the sidewall and flapped around on the motorway and it chopped through all the wires all the inner arts all the blue bits all where you fill it up with diesel and all them cables 
So Andy's having to solder them all together. So he's doing it all day yesterday. There's the tires in here actually. There's a tire that like disintegrated. It's locked. Hold well, on, I'll turn the camera on. That's the tire inside there that's shredded. This is what arrived yesterday that was dark when I got back. It's a Jury Products bag lifter, so it, it'll lift four ton because it's got quite long tines on it. Got little lumps on the end so the bags don't fall off. They do want paint in the last foot orange because they're a bit hard to see because they're so shiny, especially in the shed with grey walls when you're going in. It's, you don't really see it, but it's pretty strong. They do do a version where you can get a hydraulic ram to adjust them, but this is on just like these gate pins because. We'd, I don't think we need it hydraulic, but apparently if you get a hydraulic one, when you pick them up, you can squeeze the tires together and it makes the bag, bags not move and shake on the road um, and swing. Well, we don't take bags down the road on these. We, we stopped doing taking bags down the road a few years ago after we, we burst one and took a bit of cleaning up. So we always move them on a trailer or if we have to go down the road, we put them in a bucket. I don't think you're supposed to go down the road with one loaded anyway. So it's going to be handy now because when we pick up with the Mini Merlot, the bags are going to be higher so it'll clear into the drill easier. And when you're unloading the curtain cider, the boom of the Merlot is not trying to hit the roof of the curtain cider with these on. So yeah, that's the, that's the reasoning. The other thing is as well, a lot of bags now say not to lift them with pallet forks. So that it's actually illegal to, you know, if you had an accident, you'd be in trouble if you lifted them with pallet forks. Whereas this is the design bag lifter, you see. So pretty pleased with it. Box the part, hellishly strong goes with the bucket as well as you know i've bought an mb track and a 1455 case and obviously a bateman well i'll explain how you lot are actually paying for it by watching this video so this is like the youtube over the last sort of six months so you get an income from it based on the views so at this point here is where you youtube was paying enough money each month 2600 pound to pay for the bateman now since that it is still growing so there's a bit of slack left in the income, which is now monthly going to pay for the 1455 case and the MB track. And if it keeps going on, he's got a really nice quad track in. So that is why I've bought them tractors because the farm obviously makes, well, hopefully this year it might make a bit of money, even though fertilizers through the roof. But the YouTube income is like nearly 100% profit because I don't have to do anything for it other than my time and use my phone, which I have anyway. So. It makes sense to, to buy interesting stuff, which makes the videos more interesting, doesn't it? So, and then also, if we have open days, there's more stuff for people to look at. So, yeah, so you guys are paying for the 1455 and the MB track. So, thank you. I should just also mention as well, SG Finance, so that's Steve from, I think it's Associate General, it's called. He used to work for Agco. Been brilliant with all this sort of tractor dealers and all my little wheeling deals that I do. And they're actually thinking of doing a bespoke classic tractor policy, because at the moment, with the pound devaluing, everything seems to be going up. Well, it's not really going up, just the pound's getting cheaper. And if your interest rate you're paying, which is good interest rate, is less than inflation, it's a no brainer to go and borrow as much as you can, as fast as you can. Especially if stuff that's gonna appreciate rather than depreciate, like classic tracks and the likes. So if anyone's seeing the classic traction and things, well, I really want one, but I can't quite afford it, but you could afford the monthly payments. Have a word with SG Finance. This, this isn't like a paid for plug or anything. It's just, he it was really good sorting it out. And he did say we're getting asked more and more for policies like this. So they're going to come up with a bespoke policy. This trailer's on now, ready for delivering wood chip, but it's full of water. There's a bit of water leaking out the tailgate here through the, through the grain chute. So uh, the rubber seal's pretty good though. We'll see what happens when we open it. Absolutely. Full of water. Must be about 2,000 litres of water in there. I've just got to spray it to show you how wet it is. So if you look, this field sinking straight into it. This is where the harvest is driven, it's got water. Anyway, I'm spraying it off, so I'm spraying this headland off. It's got a bit of grass weed, I'm spraying off that patch there. But, you can't you can see I've driven up the field there, it's been cutting in the sprayer. You see there, it's like nearly got a bow wave in front of the wheel, it's that soft. I don't know whether this will dry up at all this time before Christmas, but that's a spring profit. But it's pretty wet. 
Oh yeah, happy uh, birthday today as well on the bumper. Happy birthday to you guys. You can see there the ruts about 18 inches deep. So we're trying to spray this little bit here. Got my wheels dirty, imagine how bad they'd look if they were black. I've just quickly whizzed around this field here because it's got a little bit of ryegrass and different things growing in it and we wanted to put a cover crop in. So I'm just killing that off first. It's the first take, it's been dry enough or not too windy for spray for ages. So it's next to the one I've just done. Loads of people, like loads of people are asking me when this year's tractor run is. So last year, I think it was the 19th of December or the 20th, which is a Sunday before Christmas this year. It'll be as near to that as possible, but the Football Club Everton is playing on the Saturday and Sky can move the fixtures whenever they want and that could actually be next week that we'd find that out. So we can't confirm the date until we know that or we move totally away from the weekend and have it on a weeknight. Anyway, I've got a meeting with the police at one o'clock on Monday about this. I've had numerous phone calls and different emails going backwards and forwards for the last few weeks trying to sort this out. It's taken a lot more organising this year than it did last year. Last year we kind of just said we're doing it, will you help us and, and surprise support and they did. This year, they're like, because it was such a success, there's a lot more, th I don't think they realised the reaction it was going to get and the amount of people watching basically. So it's got a lot more planning to go into it. But we're, luckily we have got more time, but it isn't as easy as last year so I won't know the date yet basically so can please people please stop texting me asking me what the date is and also as well can people stop tagging me the MB tracks that's for sale because I've already got one coming and I don't want to see that one that's for sale in um, Selby I think I've been tagged in it like 12 times already and I already knew it was for sale before it was put on Facebook because the guy had messaged me as well so yeah but thanks if I'm looking for something and I say that yeah but I've already bought one now so just stop tagging me in that that'd be great Chicken's trying to get the fly the other side of the window. Two more pallets of seed socks that need sorting out tomorrow and packaging, ready for dispatch to Spaldings. 25,000 subscribers, it's just unbelievable for something that started as a joke and the growth over the last few months, well the last six months is just unbelievable. So thanks to everyone that's watching, thanks Cotland Farmer for telling me to change the settings because I had it set up all wrong in the beginning. Thanks to Tom for some of his advice as well, Tom Pemberton who was talking about before with the bucket brush. And thanks to everyone, thanks to, thanks to um, David Bennett actually, because he's the one that told me to carry on and not stop, because I was going to stop at a year, wasn't I? Anyway, unbelievable. Quarter of the way to getting a YouTube plaque as well, so hopefully that'll be a, something that we can look forward to maybe next year or the year after, whatever. If you've been watching the video this far, please click like, then more people will see it. And don't forget, if it's been an interesting one, share it on Facebook and share it with your friends so that they can also see it. If you want to watch another video, you can click over there. If you want to subscribe, it's over here. Thanks again to everyone that's watching. Thanks to everyone that's paying for the sprayer, the MB track and the 1455. And tomorrow we're going to update the cool wall because I've printed some more pictures out. So the 1455 and the MB track, are they cool or sub-zero? Let me know.